why put me in the fire first? <laughs> and I accept the responsibility of being the first one in the fire. <laughs> and as you listen to the words and, and read the words of James Boggs, you, you get a sense of, of what everyone will say, many will say, is his, his sense of being in the present moment, but always contextualizing that moment in, his, in history. And I think that's the important thing when we think about that. Uh, here he's born at the end of the first great war, the war to end all wars. The war that, in the first war of the 20th century, major war of the 20th century, and yet that war is a, a war that is a war to kill the ideas that had come out of the last part of the 19th century. Yeah. Movements in this country like the populist movement, <coughs> movements around the world around and with the ascendancy and the victory of the Russian Revolution, the Bolshevik Revolution. So the war was designed to kill those ideas. And you got a sense that in this, in this period where there's extraordinary inequity in the, in the country and in the world itself. As these ideas began to, get, begin to generate and began to bring about a, another consciousness, and I'm, leave, I'm leaving out the statement that Du Bois made at the first Pan-African Congress in 1900, the question of the 20th century is going to be the color line. And he was not just simply talking about African American being of African descent himself, but he was talking about people of Asiatic descent, mm -hmm. of Hispanic descent. He was talking about all of Arab descent. He said the question of the 20th century is going to be the 20th, the color line. So we, we, we merged at these particular points where Jimmy lives between these two periods these extraordinary moments of radicalism. Eugene Dale's running for president in 1920, the year after he's born. The white fight for women's rights by Emma Goldman and women's suffrage. All these particular ideas, the radicalism, the extraordinary radicalism of black radicalism in the 20th century, at the beginning, middle of the 20th century, leading up to the general strike 1934 in San Francisco, where the great socialist leader, Harry Bridges, takes his, well, takes his workers out on strike, shuts down the port all along the, east, the west coast in San Francisco, I mean, in California and Oregon, in order to win that strike, and bringing African Americans, men, to the, to, to the docks as dock workers in 19, after the victory in 1935. And the New Deal, you see, what, what he's saying is that, and so incredibly, when you listen to him reading, is a connection with all these, from even as far back as the meeting in the 11th century when Native people in this country got together, First Nation people in the, got together in this country and began to design ways in which they were going to live together in community in the country itself, long before 500 years or 400 years. 500 years before the Mayflower and the Jamestown, it, uh, Jamestown settlements and everything else. So the idea is that where do we take, where do we go from now? And taking on, 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 on Dr. King's last book, where do we go from now? Community of Chaos. At this particular moment, as he mentioned in his comments here, he talk, spoke about the, the necessary this moment that this, this moment that we, he, we were talking about 19, in 1992, the moment now has translated to another generation what needs to be done, the work that needs to be done. And I think we have to kind of, when you think about that, the idea of revolution, and within the context, within the word revolution is the idea of evolution as well. And, and how much, how much we, we have to take from that as we see succeeding generations now talking about the issue of climate change, global warming, now I'm talking about the issue of the, the two existential 
really the dangers that we face here is climate change or global warming, but also a nuclear war, nuclear annihilation, right. killing ourselves and ending this experiment called human existence. <laughs> Those are the kind of things that we address that there. So how do we address that within the, the, how do we deal with that, the intersectionality of all these issues that we see now? And, and, and even though they may be particular to us specifically, whether it's issues of, of women's rights, whether it's the issue around racism that's still involved, whether it's issues around, of, 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 around what, does, what is democracy and what does democracy mean and how do we use that platform in transformation. I think that in the sense that the process continues to be one of understanding historically what our evolution is, what our development is, and everything else, and then coming to some kind of system, some sort of consensus about, not always the same consensus, about the things that we need to do. What are the actions that we need to do? We are able to talk about now this from just from the Occupy movement itself, the 1% and the 99%. Mm -hmm. We may have been able to use that in other frameworks before, but there's a consciousness around young people, around the 1% and the 99%. And what we, what, what do we, if we identify that, then we identify the whole idea of the role that corporate America plays, an extraordinary multinational, uh, wealth of multinational uh, uh, companies and how they dictate not only domestic policy, but foreign policy as well. There's so many things, and that's the other thing. What do we see now when we see deindustrialization? when we see so many different ways in which, in which we, we, we see how people are, are commodified in different ways? In no different ways, what are the questions that we have to ask ourselves in order to save the planet, in order to save ourselves, come from clearly from, from Jimmy's analysis, James' analysis, an analysis of what the past struggles have been, the, the radical nature of those struggles, and the importance that we, we know that whether it's the civil rights movement, we call it the civil rights movement, but it should be the civil rights revolution. The civil rights movement in itself was a part of that transition and part of that evolution that we go in. Thank you so much. Thank you.